rain, but some operators still fall, skid, and saw their own logs and maintain all the machinery needed to process them. Our next story looks at one such person near Quinnell who views machinery and his automobile collection as nothing more than a way of life. I'm going towards 44 years. If I make it till next June, I've got 44 years behind me with this mill. It used to be a family operation, but since the mid-60s, the mill's been primarily a one-man operation, harvesting, building, fixing, everything with one pair of hands. I like to make things. I like to make things. I could take a worthless log. Timber at that time was worthless, or very near worthless. It was just everywhere. People were burning it to get rid of it, uh, to make fields. And I could take that log and make a nice show beam or a nice piece of lumber. I always like to make things, so it felt natural to me to mill. There's been potential buyers of the mill over the years, but they've come and they've gone. There's no interest in selling because he enjoys making it all work. He never throws anything out. Machinery parts from one will be used for another. It's running with a 1950 Chrysler engine which we put on it in 1952. The first year we ran it with a Wallace tractor. I put, uh, there's a rear end, Studebaker rear end is what takes the sawdust out and what takes the slabs away is a Buick rear end. We've used rear axles, there's four rear axles used in that mill today. Bud doesn't like to change much when it comes to his equipment. Call it pride, integrity. He says when you modernize it, it's no longer original. Well, it's like putting, taking a six volt system off of a 1950s car and adapting it to 12 volt. You destroyed it, to, as far as I'm concerned, because this is what the company put on it and that's the way it's meant to run. And that's the way I sort of feel about the mill. And that pretty much explains his feelings about his car collection next to the mill. Some run, some don't. Some for parts, others just a connection to the past. My dad used to look after the cars on this side of the river. There was no bridge when it was ferry days. He looked after the cars over here and taught many of the old timers to drive. So those vehicles were always in our yard. And as newer, just staying with cars, say, but as newer cars come out, I figured that those old cars still had a place to be. They, sh they shouldn't all be destroyed and wrecked and so on. And anything that was old is a stepping stone, so I've always been interested in saving that. And it's a dream of his one day to open a museum that would be a moving, working testament to machinery in B.C. from years gone by. In the last two years, two winters, I've done, I've worked over one tractor each winter and made them uh, operational machines, which I'm kind of proud of. But I just wish I had more time to, to devote to it. I have a little... Chinese jug that I got when I was about four years old and I still have it today. And I do have occasional artifacts, some of my original toys from being a little kid. So I've really been at it quite a while uh, since we moved to this place in 1958. This is the accumulation. It's his way of preserving heritage. A drive by the Murs Mill and collection today would be the same as it was 40 years ago except a few parts have been added and a few more used. I bought old Model T engines and even as a young fellow, you buy them for five dollars a piece. This is say after the war, or yeah, around 1950. And the fellows would laugh and say, that kid sure is he's sure a dummy, no good for anything. But in a short time, I got something that runs and saws wood or it'll do anything for me that I ask. People tell me how no good they are and I say, well, don't, don't judge them that way. Maybe you didn't know how to run them. Mm -hmm. So, not that I know it all. I don't, and I still learn. When I fix things, I still learn. 
and I always will until I'm gone. Uh, if we ever get to know it all, that's in real bad shape. The artifacts, parts, and broken down old cars and tractors sit quietly along the Nazco Highway, collecting dust and weeds. That's okay, though, because somewhere, somehow, one day they or their parts will come back to life. For all the broken knuckles and uh, trouble that it's given me to bring it back, it's all completely lost the minute that perks to life. It's all completely gone.